All right, let's talk about limits, and this is the algebraic approach. And first, let me go over the difference between the value of the function versus its limit. So let's take a look at f of x. If this is equal to x minus 3 over x squared minus 8x plus 15. All right, let's take a look. First, let's talk about what if we want to do f of 3. Well, it means that x is exactly equal to 3. And then just plug it into all the x's and see what happens. So on the top, we have 3 and then minus 3 over. And then here we have 3 squared minus 8 times 3 and then plus 15. All right, now let's go ahead and work that out. On the top, we get 0. And on the bottom, work that out. You will also get 0. All right, this right here is the value of the function. And per our discussion before, as long as we see a zero on the bottom when we are just doing a computation, then the answer, what well, the response right here is undefined. Just put it undefined and move on. Once again, we are just trying to do a computation. It has no limit. This is not calculus. When you see a zero on the bottom, it doesn't matter if it's zero over zero or 12 over zero. It's just undefined. Put that down, move on. Now, if we are talking about limit, then it's different. So let's say if we have the limit as x approaching 3 of the function, which is x minus 3 over x squared minus 8x plus 15. In this case, we already know that if we put 3 into all the x's, then we get 0 over 0. But in this case, it's about limit. So do not just say undefined. Do not just put down indeterminate. Indeterminate is just a way to tell you that, hey, we have to do more work in order to figure out the answer. Indeterminate is not the response for this question. All right. So let's see how we can really work this out. Well, on the bottom here, we have a quadratic trinomial. And in fact, we have done this so, 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 so many times in the past, right? It should be our second nature. We can factor it. So let's take a look at the limit as x approaching 3. On the top, we still have x minus 3. On the bottom, factor it, we get x minus 3 times x minus 5. Aha! We can cancel out the x minus 3 and x minus 3. And in fact, this cancellation also cancels out the 0 over 0 case. And what does 0 over 0 represent? I will tell you that after we finish this. So once we cancel the out of x minus 3 on the top and bottom, then we can actually just plug in the 3 into the remaining x. Because remember, when we are doing limit, x is not exactly equal to 3. We're just approaching 3 from the right-hand side or from the left-hand side. So we don't really care about exactly 3, but once you cancel the 0 over 0 case, plugging 3 into the rest, and we will get 1 over 3 minus 5, and the answer is simply negative 1 half. And then we are done. So now let me explain what's going on right here. And then the best way for me to do so is to utilize graphs. So let's first take a look at what if we want to graph 1 over x minus 5. We have done this before. So we shall know that there is a vertical isotope at 5. So I'll just say phi a at x equals 5. And then the graph looks like this, and then like that. And then we are done. However, if the equation was given to us as x minus 3 over x squared minus 8x plus 15, well, per our discussion, we know that we can factor out the bottom and then cancel out the x minus 3. So that's quite nice. And we still end up with 1 over x minus 5. So the graph should look like this. Right? Well, except for one little point. Let me explain. So let's go ahead and still make the graph for 1 over x minus 5. We will still have a vertical asymptote at x equals 5. And the graph will still look kind of like this. Well, as we can see, here we have x minus 5, meaning that x cannot be equal to 5. Otherwise, we get 0 on the bottom. From the graph, we have a way to indicate that, and that is the vertical asymptote. However, whenever we are given an expression, 
make sure you look for the original expression before any cancellation. Originally, the denominator is this. Yes, we can factor it. We have x minus 3 times x minus 5. Because of the x minus 3 was on the bottom, so we have to also make sure that x cannot be equal to 3. Even though we cancel it out, but still, x cannot be equal to 3. We have to have that somewhere. And we also have to have a way to indicate that on the graph. So this is how we do it. This is the graph that we have right now. Now we just have to go to when x is equal to 3, let's say somewhere right here. And then we just have to go to the graph and then put down an open circle. And then let me just erase that blue curve right here. This is another way to indicate that, hey, x cannot be equal to 3. But in this case, it's actually an open circle. So we have a hole at x equals 3. And the hole is exactly what we mean by the RD, removable discontinuity, at x equals 3. And finally, to end this example, I think it's proper for us to talk about the domain and also the range for this function right here. So the domain for this right here is that x cannot be equal to 3 and x cannot be equal to 5. We use interval notation. We say it goes from negative infinity with a parenthesis because you can never include infinity, comma 3, and then again parenthesis because we are not including 3, union 3, comma 5, not including 3, not including 5, and then union 5 to infinity. As of the range, well, we look at this for the y value, y cannot be negative 1 half, and then also because we have this horizontal acetone, y cannot be 0. We write from negative infinity to negative one half, and then union negative one half to zero, and then union zero to infinity. So this is how you find the domain and the range for this particular function.